eight U.S. electric companies serving nearly 20 million customers in 22 states joined together today in a commitment to help make America the most energy efficient economy in the world. Remember what I said yesterday. Goldman Sachs has a study that says if the United States, Asia, uh, the United States, China, India, and Russia were to reach Japan's levels of energy efficiency alone with not one new watt of clean energy at all, it would reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 20% across the globe. Sometimes people say you, you can't grow your economy and take action on the environment at the same time. We, we actually will meet our Kyoto targets in the UK. Uh, we've re reduced greenhouse gas emissions by around about 20%, and we've grown our economy at the same time. So it can actually be done. Once you create a framework in which it's clear there are going to be market incentives and mechanisms which make it worth their while commercially to you know, research the new technology and develop it, that is when you will really get this deal done. I agree fully what, uh, to what has been said just now about the importance of the private sector and the importance of incentives, the importance of driving technological change. I'm a technology optimist. And I, it's going to be an important part of the solutions. In a way, the uh, only realistic option for Africa is to grow in a carbon neutral fashion. The African perspective is this. Africa contributed nothing to global warming because it failed to develop the way the rest of the world developed. Second, the impact of global warming is going to be more devastating in Africa than elsewhere in the world. Africa has the potential to grow in a green fashion. I'll give you two examples, Ethiopia and Congo. These two countries alone can generate enough electricity from hydropower to electrify the whole of the continent. The truth of the matter is, in any conversation with African leaders, they do care desperately about their development being sustainable. But if you've got people you know, literally, without even the very basic necessities in life, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to provide economic growth for them. It is economically and mor morally indefensible to have tariffs on any environmental goods and services. I mean, what's wrong with this picture? That we've got clean technologies that are needed around the world, and there are tariffs. So there, there shouldn't be tariffs there. I would only say, um, for those people that have resisted this argument about climate change. Um, I mean, I think, frankly, as the evidence has accumulated, their position has been exposed as being wrong. And what's more, I'd say, in, in no other field of policy, if the consequences of a particular challenge were so momentous, would we not, at least as a precautionary principle, <laughs> operate to deal with the issue?